I'm Professor Sabetta Matsumoto, and I'm going to lead you through this exploration of Newtonian mechanics. To get started today, let's look at Newton's laws. Newton's first law, which is also the law of inertia, states that an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an external force. Translating this into math, this is saying that the change in momentum is zero if the net force applied is zero. Newton's second law, which we're most likely familiar with as F equals MA, states the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied. Mathematically, this is saying the rate of change of momentum is equal to the external force. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Mathematically, this is saying that if I have a force, F12, on particle 1 coming from particle 2, it's equal to minus F21, which is the force on particle 2 coming from particle 1. Today, we're going to be focusing on this equation, dp by dt is equal to the applied force. This is a differential equation as written, but I'll rewrite it so that it is only in terms of position variables. Momentum is mass times velocity, so I can rewrite the term on the left as m times dv by dt. And this is equal to m times d squared x by dt squared, which is equal to the applied force, which can be a function of position, velocity, and time. This is the standard equation of motion that we get from Newtonian mechanics, and we're going to think about different ways to solve it. Before we get there, let's take a quick aside to look at how to solve separable differential equations. Separable equations have the form dx by dt is equal to some function f of t times some function g of x. And we're going to solve for x as a function of t. The key idea here is that I can group all of the terms involving x on one side of the equation and all of the terms involving t on the other side. I'll multiply both sides through by dt and then divide them through by g of x. I end up with the x terms dx divided by g of x on the left and the t terms f of t times dt on the right. From here I can integrate. On the right I'm going to integrate from t naught to t, which is our time variable. On the left, I'm going to be integrating from x of the initial time t naught to the final position as a function of t. From here, all I need to do is solve this equation for x as a function of t. For a dynamics problem, this would give us the trajectory of our particle. This form of the integrals implements the initial conditions for the equation. On the right hand side, we're starting at t naught and integrating to time t. And on the left hand side, this corresponds to starting at the initial position x of t naught equals x naught. We'll put this into practice now when we look at some of the forms of the equations of motions we'll encounter when we solve Newtonian mechanics problems. Here are three of the most common types of equations we might run into. Equations of motion are in general second order ordinary differential equations, or ODEs where order denotes the maximum number of derivatives in any term, and ordinary means that our differential equation has only one independent variable, t. Second order equations need two initial or boundary conditions to solve. We can imagine having a force that's only a function of time, a force that's a function of velocity, and of course we can also have a force that's a function of position. The first two equations are really just first order ordinary differential equations. The first equation is a second order equation as written, but I can easily turn it into a first order equation. Let me rewrite x double dot as dv by dt. This equation is clearly separable as I have no explicit functions of v and all of the functions of t are on the right hand side. From here, I can gather my terms and integrate. I'm going to integrate from velocity at time zero, this is my initial velocity, to my velocity as a function of time. And on the right hand side, I can integrate from my initial time, so time zero, to time t. And I'll change the variables in the integrand to dummy variables so I don't get confused between the t's and the v's. This solution is a solution for the velocity. Often I'm interested in solving for the position as a function of time. 
So to solve for this, I need to integrate once more to get x as a function of time. An example of problems like this is imagine I have a ball thrown upwards from height h with velocity v0. What's the maximum height it attains? The next case we're interested in is mv dot is equal to force as a function of velocity. Again, this is a separable equation, but it does have a bit of a different form than the last example. Here we have dv by dt is equal to 1 over m times f of v. The first thing I want to do is group terms. dv divided by f of v on the left and 1 over m dt on the right. Then I can integrate exactly the same way as I did before. On my left, integral will go from v at time 0 to v as a function of t, and on the right, I'll integrate from 0 to t. Now the integral on the left is going to give me a function that depends on the initial velocity and the velocity as a function of time, and I have 1 over m times t on the right. So I need to be able to invert this equation in order to analytically solve for the velocity. An example of this sort of problem is a baseball is thrown with quadratic drag. How far will it go? Quadratic drag, as we'll see in the next video, is proportional to velocity squared. The last equation isn't as straightforward an equation to solve, since it's a second order equation. In this form, it isn't a separable equation. So let's start by rewriting it as dv by dt is equal to 1 over m times force as a function of x. It doesn't look like this is going to be helpful now because we've got functions of x, v, and t. But there's a trick I can do to make this separable. I'm going to rewrite dv by dt using the chain rule. dv by dt can be rewritten as dv by dx times dx by dt. You'll notice that dx by dt is just the velocity. Thus, dv by dt is equal to the velocity times dv by dx. Now, this is a separable equation. My original equation is now v times dv by dx equals 1 over m times force as a function of x. First, I'll multiply both sides through by dx, and then I can integrate. On the right, I'll integrate from 0 to x. And on the left, I'll integrate the initial velocity v at x equals 0 to the velocity as a function of x, and some interesting physics that comes from them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.